so it's all very well and good to go, okay, this feed company makes good feed. And then you look, I mean, if you look in the Pride's brochure, there's 20 something feeds there and you're like, great. So we've decided on a feed company, but we've got no idea which feed we're actually going to use. Um, so there's just three points here on selecting the right feed for your horse. Um, if you're really unsure, there's people like Katie and Sammy who are sitting up the back there, your friendly Victorian reps. You can always ring them and go, which feed should I feed my horse? Um, and if they don't know, they'll ring me and ask me which feed um, someone should be feeding a horse. But you can, you can have a go at working it out yourself too. So always use a feed for the purpose it was intended i.e. don't use a breeding feed for a horse in work and vice versa. You'd be amazed how many people do this. Um, they'll take something like the biomare cubes and feed it to their um, racehorses or something. It's like, why? It's a breedmare feed. It's not a racehorse feed. Um, and why? Because feeds are designed for a very specific type of horse in mind. Um, and if you use them for another type of horse, it may not meet requirements for some nutrients and provide too much of others. So a good example of this is if you use a breeding feed for an endurance horse, it's going to be too low in vitamin E, so their muscles probably won't get the antioxidant protection they need during work. It's going to be too high in calcium, which is a pretty reliable way of causing a condition called the thumps, um, and too high in protein, which can cause overheating, dehydration, electrolyte deficiency, which then can go on and cause tying up. So it's just a good idea that if you've got a horse in work, use a feed that's designed for a horse in work. If you've got a broodmare, use a feed that was designed for a broodmare. Um, select a feed with a suitable recommended daily feeding rate. So don't choose a feed with a recommended feeding rate of three kilos, but then only feed that feed at half a kilo a day because the feed was designed with a certain amount of vitamins and minerals to be fed at three kilos a day. If you feed it at half a kilo a day, you're only going to be getting one-sixth of the amount of vitamins and minerals that horse should be getting from that feed. Um, so premix feeds are formulated with a very specific level of vitamins and minerals, and that is actually what determines the feeding rates that you'll see on the back of any feed bag. Um, and a feed with a recommended feeding rate of half a kilogram a day is going to have a much higher level of vitamins and minerals than a feed with a recommended feeding rate of three kilos a day. Um, but when both of those feeds are fed at the recommended feeding rate, they'll meet a horse's vitamin and mineral requirements. Um, so I'll just have a quick look. I'll, um, just comparing Pride's 150 <coughs> pellet and Pride's Easy Results. So both can be used for horses in light to moderate work. But if you have a look, the 150 pellet, if you have a look in... Um, the brochure book at some stage, its feeding rate is somewhere for a 500 kilogram horse, it's somewhere between 400 and 800 grams a day. So it's quite concentrated, it's got a very low feeding rate. Easy results going to have a feeding rate um, for a horse in light to moderate work of somewhere around that two to three and a half kilo a day mark. And if you have a look at the actual concentration, I don't know if you can read that because it's quite small, but the 150 pellet, which is the green one, copper, it has 250 milligrams per kilogram of copper. In the easy result, there's only 44 milligrams per kilogram of copper. So there's a huge difference in concentration. Um, zinc, there's 690 milligrams per kilogram in the 150 pellet. There's only 109 milligrams per kilogram in the easy result. And the same thing with the vitamins. So vitamin A, um, there's 49,500 international units of vitamin A in the 150 pellet. There's only 10,500 international units in the easy, easy results. So you can see there's a big difference in the concentration of um, vitamins and minerals. There's also a big difference in the um, recommended feeding rates for those feeds. So if I put in, um, if I put half a kilogram a day of 150 pellet in, I can't remember the exact horse I put this in for. I think it was something like a 500 kilogram horse in moderate work. Um, if I put half a kilogram of 150 pellet in for that horse on good quality C3 type grass pasture, so this would be your nice green um, rye um, temperate type grasses that you get down here, and we have a look at the, the diet. So this is um, from Feed Excel. Pretty much the aim of the game is to get everything up close to that 100% line that's running down there. Some things are always going to be high. So manganese, our Australian soils are naturally rich in manganese and we almost always have high manganese levels in our, in our diets because there's a lot in the forage that we feed. Same with iron. There's always a lot of iron in forage that we feed. Um, magnesium and potassium is always high in forage. So some of these nutrients and the B vitamins too, some of them are high just because of what's coming in from the forage. And we can't do anything about that. We can't take it out of the forage, so it just has to stay in there and the horse just deals with it. Um, so half a kilogram of the 150 pellet a day is meeting requirements really nicely. If we then go, all right, well, we'll feed half a kilogram of easy result on the same pasture, 
see all of a sudden you're getting mineral deficiencies because the concentration of minerals in that feed is not high enough to be fed at half a kilogram a day. So the energy levels are the same. If you look at the very top, the digestible energy, um, the horse is going to maintain condition about the same on the two um, options. So sitting at 96% with the 150 pellet, um, still 96%, slightly, very slightly higher, 0.4 of a percent difference is nothing um, with the easy results. So the calorie intake will be the same. So the horse's body condition and probably its behaviour is going to be the same. But going on in the background in the easy result, which you won't see turn up in your horse probably for years because the horse doesn't put up a sign and say that it's copper deficient. It just, you know, in four or five years' time, its hoof quality will um, turn to pot. And if it gets an immune challenge, it probably won't be able to mount a very good immune response because it doesn't have zinc and selenium, um, enough zinc and selenium in its diet. But you can't see this stuff going on. Um, so you, you need to feed feeds at the right feeding rate. Um, or if you are going to feed a feed like Easy Result and you really, really want to feed Easy Result, you're going to need to top it up with a vitamin and mineral supplement so that um, your vitamin and mineral requirements are met. Um, and then the last thing is just select a feed with ingredients that suit your horse. So if you, if you know a particular horse either doesn't like a certain ingredient or can't have a certain ingredient um, for any reason, then you should avoid that ingredient. And basically that just comes down to reading the ingredient lists really carefully and avoiding um, things that you don't want, which is hard with least cost feeds because you don't actually know what's in the feed. Um, with set recipe feeds, you can certainly go through and, and avoid, you know, if, if for some reason you've got a horse that doesn't like sunflower seeds and don't feed a feed that's got sunflower seeds in it, um, choose something that doesn't have them in there. Um, so sometimes certain ingredients can cause behavioural changes. It's rare, but it can happen. Um, it can cause an allergic reaction. This is very rare, but it can happen. You read on forums, people have got horses that are allergic to all sorts of things, but I really doubt in most cases that it's actually the case. What they're seeing is probably something else that's been diagnosed as an allergy because they can't actually diagnose what it, what it is. Um, or horses may simply prefer not to eat a particular ingredient. The most important situation where this applies is for horses that are either laminitic um, or have something like Cushing's disease or have the PSSM form of tying up, which we'll talk about a bit later, but they can't have starch and sugar in their diet. So you have to avoid um, feeds that contain cereal grain or any cereal grain byproducts. So things like barley, not oh, barley, some, things like um, pollard and bran, mill run, mill mix, they're all cereal derived from cereal grain, so you need to avoid them in the diet. Um, <laughs> Be careful, read labels carefully, because this, this is just taken off a, a, um, a feed company's website. This feed's been around forever and a day. They're still saying, contains no grain, like really clearly. It's on the bag and it's on their website, contains no grain. And then you go down and read the ingredient list, and um, I don't know why they've got it. They should have the highest ingredient first, they don't. But the grain is just, the whole feed is just bran and pollard, which is from wheat. And yet they're saying contains no grain. I don't know what it contains if it doesn't contain any grain, but bran and pollard is grain. You can't say that a feed contains no grain when it's made from grain. It's not made from any whole grain, so they don't actually put any whole wheat in there. They're just putting byproduct in there, but it's still grain, and you can't, it just, you can't do that. So just buy, beware, read your labels really carefully, and, um, and don't... You know, they say the big print giveth and the small print taketh away. Um, so if the big print says no grain, make sure you read the small print and take a lot of notice of the ingredients to make sure that there actually is no grain in there. Um, <coughs> the other thing, I should have put it up here. If you go to the Pride's website, if you're, if you're struggling trying to figure out what feed to use, if you go to the Pride's website, there's a really neat little tool on there called the Easy Feed Selector. Um, and we, we, as in FedExL, built it for prides, but um, it, you can put your horse's details in and you can, you can say, um, you can tell it what pasture it's got access to and what, what other forage you feed, so you can put in the type of hay you're feeding and how much you feed. Um, you can say if the horse has got issues, so in your case you could say that it's a hyperactive horse or if your horse has got laminitis or you want to build top line or it's got a dry coat, you can put all those things in um, and then it'll actually give you some recommended diets based on their feeds with amounts um, and it'll do things like if it does use small amounts of easy result it'll top it up with a vitamin mineral supplement for you so that the diet is balanced um, but it's it's a neat little tool just go and have a bit of a tinker around with it and try a few horses in it and see what it comes up with for you